Hey, hello, hi there, kids. Welcome to God's Story for Kids. I'm your host, Henry. You can call me Hank. And I'm sophisticated. Sophie for short. Sophie, I've been studying up on human anatomy. Okay, like parts of the body? Yep, and I have some fun facts for us today. For some reason, I just feel the tiniest bit nervous. But okay, let's hear one. Your ears never stop growing. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, and your mouth produces enough spit to fill two swimming pools throughout your life. (laughs) Gross! And fingernails grow three times faster than toenails. Okay, that one wasn't as bad. All right, last one. On average, a person will fart enough in a day to fill a party balloon. (laughs) Hank, stop. I know, but I just had to say it. We're not here to talk about toots and spit. Let's get to the good stuff. I thought that stuff was pretty good. Okay, well, let's get to the Bible then, the actual good stuff. Hey, God made our bodies. They are good. All right, you got me there. And speaking of bodies, did you know the Bible says that just like our bodies have many parts and each part has a special job, that's how it is with the people who follow Jesus? What does that mean? It says we're many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. God has given each of us different gifts. Some people are good teachers. Some people are good at serving. Some people are good at encouraging or leading or giving generously or showing kindness. Okay. And so whatever gift God has given you, he says to do those things well and use them to show his love to others. All right. So just like all the body parts have to work together to make a body function, all those God-given gifts have to work together to spread the good news of God's love. Exactly. So what kind of gifts has God given you, Sophie? Well, I think God has given me the gift of teaching. I like to help other people understand the Bible. What about you, Hank? Hmm. I'll have to think about it. I'm not sure right now. Okay. How about you, kids? What are some God-given gifts you have? I am strong. I'm good at learning things. I'm good at soccer. Those were great. Are there any Bible stories you can think of where someone is using their God-given gifts, Sophie? I I bet there's a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. In fact, the first one that comes to mind is one of my most favorite stories in the whole Bible. It's about Queen Esther. Oh, I know about her. She was super brave, right? Mm Mm-hmm, she was. Esther was one of God's people, and she was selected by King Xerxes to become the queen. But wasn't there a bad guy who didn't like her? Right again. Haman was the king's chief helper, and he did not like God's people. He wanted everyone to bow down to him. But Esther's cousin Mordecai refused He would only bow down to God. So Haman tricked the king? Yes. Haman went to the king and said, God's people are bad. You should sign a law to help me get rid of them. So the king signed the law, and it put God's people in danger. But didn't Esther save them? She did. Mordecai heard about this new law and told Esther, You must save God's people. Maybe God made you queen for such a time as this. So Esther came up with a plan, but it was kind of dangerous for her. Why was it dangerous? If her plan made the king mad, it could have hurt her. What did she do? Well, Esther invited King Xerxes and Haman to a special meal. There, she asked the king why Haman wanted to get rid of her. The king was so surprised. He didn't understand. So Esther explained that Haman tricked him into signing a law that would get rid of God's people, including her. Oh, I bet that made the king mad. Kings don't like to be tricked. No one likes to be tricked. The king was mad. Ah! He told the guards to arrest Haman, and then he made Mordecai his new chief helper. And that's how God used Esther to save his people. Whoa, it's a good thing that Mordecai was so faithful. Yep. And it's a really good thing Esther was so brave. Yep. And it's a good thing that the king ended up using his power for good once he knew what was going on. That's right. They were all using their gifts to keep God's people safe. So how do you use your gifts, Sophie? Well, probably the most obvious way would be this podcast. 
we get to teach each other and all our listeners what the Bible says and why it's important. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So have you thought any more about what your God-given gifts might be, Hank? I'm still thinking about it. But what about you, Hope Kids? How do you use your gifts to share God's love? I can use my strengths to help people. I can help other people learn about God. I can do soccer to show other people that they can do it too. Wow, you kids are so cool. I love to hear what you're up to. Great job. Hank, you just used one of your gifts right there. I did? Yes. Uh, what did I do? You encouraged our listeners. You're so good at it, you didn't even notice that you did it. But you're always encouraging people. Ah, huh, I guess I am. I don't even think about it. Everyone has a gift, whether they realize it or not. Well, maybe if someone isn't sure what their gifts are, they should ask someone who loves them. Maybe there are kids out there who need someone else to help point out their gifts, just like I did. Yeah, good idea, Hank. They could talk about it together. And then the most important thing would be to start using those gifts because this is where your story meets God's story, listeners. You have God-given gifts, and God wants you to use those gifts to share his love. When we all work together, we can spread the good news of his love even further. Because that's how God created us to be, in community, helping each other, encouraging each other, teaching each other. We make each other better. We really do. And that means we need you. So always remember, listeners, that you matter. You are loved, and you are a part of God's story. God's Story for Kids. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of God's Story for Kids. It's easy to find us here each week by hitting the subscribe button and then let your friends know how much you love it. And if you're looking for more ways to plug into Lutheran Church of Hope's annual theme, the whole Holy Bible in a year, check out our website for weekly family devotions and other resources for kids and adults. And if you're local, we hope to see you at Hope Kids on weekends and Wednesdays. We'll see you next week. God loves you.